Everyone seems to know blood is needed to transport oxygen and nutrients throughout our bodies, but what exactly is it, and where does it come from? Blood comes in eight forms, separated into four types – A, B, AB, and O. These types are grouped together by the presence or absence of an antigen. Antigens being substances within the body that can cause your immune system to react, releasing antibodies. Those antibodies then, in effect, find and kill the substance. Someone with type A blood will have type A antigen, type B blood will have type B antigens, and type AB will have both type A and type B antigens, while type O has neither. These four types are further broken down by another type of antigen called an Rh factor. If you have this type of antigen, you're considered positive. If you don't, then you're considered negative. The type of blood you have will depend on the types of blood your parents have. Like so many other parts of our bodies, blood type is genetic. Now that we know the types of blood, let's look at what's inside all of them. 45% of your blood volume is red blood cells, while white blood cells make up less than 1%. The rest of your blood is plasma. Red blood cells are, for the most part, created within the bone marrow of large bones. Their production is regulated by a hormone known as erythropoietin (EPO). That would be the same EPO that Lance Armstrong loved so much. All hail the king of the cheaters. They are constructed from a type of protein called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is what gives cells their distinctive red appearance. Their large number is what gives blood its crimson complexion. The main purpose of red blood cells is to carry oxygen to all the organs and cells in the body, while helping to carry carbon dioxide away. It does this by allowing oxygen molecules to bind to the large amount of iron contained within the hemoglobin. When a cell is working appropriately, it creates hydrogen atoms that cause the pH level within the cell to lower. When blood is delivered to that cell, the low pH causes the oxygen molecule to be released from the iron, giving your cell the oxygen it needs to continue functioning. The carbon dioxide produced as a result of your cell working can also be carried away by your hemoglobin. Only about 14% though. The other 86% is carried by your blood in the form of bicarbonate. The chemistry involved with that, however, is a topic for another discussion. White blood cells are also known as leukocytes. They're mostly created within our bone marrow from a type of stem cell called a hematopoietic stem cell. These cells help your body fight infections or other foreign substances within the body. They are what your immune system is made of, for the most part. Unlike the singular red blood cell, white cells come in six main forms, numbering around 4 to 10,000 per microliter of blood. Should you have a higher number than this, you probably have an infection somewhere in your body. The six types are neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, bands, monocytes, and lymphocytes. Each type of white blood cell plays a different role in the kind of infection your body is trying to fight. One example is neutrophils. These cells kill bacteria by consuming them in a process known as phagocytosis. If you have an elevated level of neutrophils within your blood, you would likely have an infection caused by bacteria. How your body makes more white blood cells in response to infection is controlled by complex mechanisms within the immune system. When you're sick, it's the specific types of white blood cell levels that help your doctor narrow down the cause of your ailment. The last part of our blood is plasma. Making up most of the blood's volume, this river of life is mostly just water. About 90% to be specific. 8% of plasma is made up of proteins that perform numerous functions within the body. Antibodies that help fight infection and fibrinogen and clotting factors that help blood clot. The remaining 2% contains nutrients like sugar and vitamins, hormones such as insulin, and electrolytes like sodium and potassium. Most of what is in plasma comes from your digestive system. You can think of your digestive system as separate from your body, just contained within it. From your mouth to your anus, anything that you can eat or drink must get broken down by this system into the parts your body can use. Once this is done, those nutrients will then pass through this system and make it into your blood. Your grandma said it best when remarking, you are what you eat. In the end, spill your blood carefully, my friends. You need almost every part of it. Should you be so unfortunate as to get it on your clothes, tell your mum to soak it in one quart warm water, one tablespoon of ammonia, and two teaspoons of detergent. Let it sit for around 15 minutes, remove the ammonia, and launder normally. You're now ready for your next bloodbath.